Welcome back to CADS. In today's show, we're diving into the heart of the action with our post-game analysis of the Tottenham versus Brighton clash. From thrilling moments to those we'd probably rather forget, we've got it all covered. So sit back, grab your cuppa, or potentially something stronger, and let's get into the nitty-gritty of what went down on the pitch. Whether it's a day for glory or one of those back-to-the-drawing-board games, we're breaking it down with our usual blend of insight, humour, and that die-hard Spurs spirit. Let's get started. Welcome, gentlemen. There's, there's four of us today. This is excellent. We are we are breaking new ground. So uh, let's get started. Um, my top left, we're going to start with uh, Benjamin, otherwise known as Cloudburst, over on TikTok. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I'm always great with uh, what's like a, a win, uh, even if it was under difficult circumstances in a way. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, um, we'll, let, we'll be happy with a win, but I'm sure we'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah, moving yeah. around anti-clockwise, for me at least, we're going to go with Ash. How you doing, Ash? Hey, man. Uh, hi, guys. How you doing? Today is, uh, last week was Grammy Awards. Today is Super Bowl Sunday here in the US. Um, and the Super Bowl may have the biggest TV viewing ratings of all time. And do you know why? Um, Taylor Swift Locking dating. Board. Taylor Swift dating somebody, wide receiver or yeah. something. Yeah, she's she's dating um, one of the stars of the Kansas City Chiefs, and they'll be they'll be uh, the cameras will be going over to show her uh, exalting and stuff like that. He's actually a really good player, uh, Travis Kelsey, and uh, so it might actually have it's 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 actually a, a, a ratings, but it'll be a ratings bonanza for the NFL. So that's what's going on in America today. Mm. Well, excuse my bias, but I believe that the, the Super Bowl doesn't get as many viewers as the FA Cup final. So mm. <laughs> we'll see. I, and moving over to the last person of our team here today, David, how you doing? Yeah, good, thanks very much. And how are I you? I escaped the rain in Paris, and as you know, I'm... Brennan Johnson's biggest fan since the 97th <laughs> minute. <of> that. <laughs> yes. Uh, so did we you can... find your phone? Did you find your phone, Dave? <laughs> Was it thrown out the window at some point? <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's talk about the game. Uh, there was a point made by Jeffrey on the on the forum. He said, "Let me quickly get it up if I can." Um, he said, "No, I've lost it completely." Hang on, here we go. Uh, he said, "I agree with most of this. I do think that Brighton deserve credit because they played really well. They were a formidable opponent. They have the quality to be in the top four, but we lack consistency. If you consider our performance in light of this, I do think we played well as a whole." He then went on to say something along the lines of. Are we, as Spurs fans, slightly more negative about this result than we should be because we felt it was slightly undeserved? Whereas the media as a whole look at it and go, hey, 96th minute winner, Spurs fans should be happy, everyone should be happy, it's a, it's a winner. What do you reckon? I I saw some stats from the game saying that we had more possession, we had more shots, we had the better chances, we had more corners... Uh, we obviously had more goals. I think it was not as bad as people make it out to be as Spurs fans that I've talked to make it out to be. And I, I also think we kind of, we, we kind of got used to the first 10 games of the season being so great that, you know, then we got the injuries, Madison, mm -hmm. Van Dien and so on. And now we're getting those players back. Are we ex all of a sudden expecting them to reach the same? Um, the same level of of like that we had in the first ten games, or are we? It's going to take a while, you know. Madison and Benson Kerr have hardly played together before. Now they've played what two games together. Um, so I think our expectations got so high in the start, and now we're getting a bit of trouble in a way. But I don't think the game was as bad as people make it out to be. I think our expectations are just high. <laughs> well, <laughs> high expectations and Spurs fans, those two things can <laughs> occasionally go together. Yeah. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, I think um, it's one of those ones where you, you see the stats and you compare it to what you saw on the day and you feel like the two don't really match up. So uh, I might have to believe the stats. I thought, again, I thought Brighton were really fantastic. They made it really, really hard for us. Yeah. But I also think that I'm not, I, I don't know much about Brighton, but I don't think they have a striker, do they? 
Oh, well, I mean, they've got Theo uh, Wankot, but apart from him, do well, you have a striker? Ever, it's, it's Welbeck, isn't it? That, uh, was his, Welbeck, actually. Yeah, yeah. Welbeck. Um, and I think if got, they had a striker, it would have been, out, it would have been a whole other story. Yeah, and uh, Evan Ferguson on the bench for some reason. Evan Ferguson, who I yeah. rate very, very... There's, there's at least two players in that Brighton team I would probably break someone's arm for. But, yeah. yeah. So what I think is... um, I think they they did dominate us for large periods of the game. Um, I thought first half outside of a five-minute purple patch where we were pretty good. The rest of the time we were putting string passes together. Richie, despite having been really good the last few games... He, he was missing passes, missing that final shot. Um, Benton, Kuo, Mathers, stuff going astray all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, then second half, we came out much better up until the subs. Once the subs came on, we lost control of the game again until, you know, the miracle of the 97th minute. But, um, which, in, which involved the subs? Which involved the subs? Absolutely, all <laughs> of them. Well, almost all of them, yeah. Um, uh, and all three of them that hadn't, you know, three people, actually, because I was saying Maddis probably should have gone off um, earlier because he looked absolutely rinsed. But he, he managed to play that pass up to to Richie, who I thought hadn't been very good. Mm-hmm. He passed it to Sonny, who I thought hadn't been good since he came on. Mm-hmm. He crossed to Johnson, who I thought was abysmal. So it was quite it was an amazing sort of sequence of proof David wrong. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, really. So uh, Saturday, then. <laughs> Yeah, I do okay. think it's always. I think it's always better to sort of learn from a win rather than learn from a, a, a draw or a loss in that way. Mm-hmm. So I do think there were many points we could probably learn from as a team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think this. You know, we've talked for a long time about and just getting started, and I think it's part of the learning process. But before we get into all of that, Ash, what did you think of the game? Thank you. <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to forget you. Don't worry. All right. Uh, two things. One uh, is that our fans tend to, uh, maybe other teams too, tend to neglect the fact there's 11 guys on the other side playing against us. And in some circumstances, actually in the Premier League, they're really, really committed um uh, professionals playing against us, and at Brighton, I, thank you Brighton for for giving us a really good game because they're really great to see, you know, and they have been for the last couple couple of years. Uh, so strange how our fans just make comments about and they do a game report and go, well, yeah, well, what about the other team? Well, how were they? Like they, they were playing man to man. I think they tired a bit at the end, man to man marking on us, and they were putting us off our game. They were causing um, sloppy passes on top of our own sort of sloppiness. Um, so that's one aspect, is that there was uh, uh, another another team playing mm-hmm. out there. And the other thing is more more just to do with a celebratory thing. There was a, a video of uh, uh, Alistair Gold was talking about uh, uh, all these clips of our players celebrating and Ricario did this the longest um, knee slide of all time in his area of the, of the pitch. But I'm just wa- wondering, uh, as a as a fan, as us fans, is it is it way more exhilarating, and exciting to score a goal near the end? Apparently, we've won three games at the South End: uh, Sheffield United, Liverpool, and yesterday Brighton. So, is it is it something that you know, when you've sort of 2-0, two, 3-1, two whatever, during the whole game, as opposed to coming back and scoring, it's it's exhilarating. Uh, and I, I left the weekend feeling exhilarated. Um, in terms of late results, I think it makes a difference. I think uh, you've got a late goal that wins it for you. There's that feeling of, oh, wow, we got away with one there, in a way. Um, and it's just that, that joy of having got three points against a good team. And they, Brighton are a very, very good team for me. Yep. We keep forgetting how good the opposition are. And they're, yes. they're often, often, I'm not going to say all the time because there's Burnley in this league and Sheffield United, but they're often, you know, Premier League quality sides who can do you damage on any given day. So we should 
absolutely make sure that we respect our opposition and do our best to damn well beat them properly. But that's that's my, my thoughts. Yeah. I do think, you know, in terms of um, these last-minute winners, as long as it does not become something you see every game, I mean, as lovely as that would be to win every game, <laughs> it, it shouldn't paper over the cracks sort of thing, you know. It's nice to have that late minute, late winner, last-minute winner in a few games a season, five games a season or whatever, and then have some other games where we just trash an opp- uh, opposition team 5-0 or yeah. 4-0, 4-1, whatever. So it, 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 you know, it feels like we're going somewhere. We're not just, not just getting lucky with last minute winners. <laughs> and yeah. I'm I mean, sure. Obviously, yeah, everyone's you know. going to take the, the win, but, um, I, I would prefer us sort of playing joined up football for 90 minutes than, <laughs> than snatching it, snatching it at the end. It's mm-hmm. much more enjoyable. I think, yeah, there were large parts of the match that I didn't really enjoy. Um, you know, which, you know, I, obviously I, I gloss over it now because, we won, but you know there were periods where I was thinking, "Well, this isn't you know, this isn't much fun." You know, I mean, it's an absorbing contest. It's you know, it's tense. It's even you know, it's evenly balanced. But I, you know, the football, our football. You're right, Ashley. They made it very difficult for us. You know, that's absolutely true. But at the same time, you know, I I, I want to ask us to play better than that. You know, to find the, the, the right passes to. You know, under hitting passes, there was a lot of under hit passes so to stop playing to feet, you know, and taking one or two touches and move it faster, like we were doing in the first 10, 10 games of the season, and that we haven't been doing lately. And, and I just want to get back to that really, the more fluid, and maybe that will come as, you know, as, as the players get, you know, gelled together and get back to full fitness. Yeah. I just, go- Matt, Madison, he, he played those 10 first 10 games, and I think he's only started two, maybe three. He's actually only played 13 of our games this season. Um, uh, Werner has played, started three or four. If you look at the players for whatever reasons that we've missed, right? if you just look at the numbers of games, because back in the... uh, I I would have to go look at Wikipedia about this. Back in in the old days, in the 60s, there would be guys playing 40 games a season, or 44. And it was just like, holy jeez. And you can't help but get teamwork uh, and cohesiveness when guys are playing that many games together. So getting back to what actually Ben had said right at the beginning, that hopefully as uh, the players will return from the, the cup tournaments and the injured players, guys like Madison and even Van Der Ven and <laughs> Benton Core. Uh, actually, I'd like to talk about Benton Core and ask what you guys think. Once they get back up to speed, um, this thing that Dave was just talking about, I think that hopefully that is going to happen, you know, and, and we'll tonk some teams three, four, nothing like Arsenal did today. Oh, let's not talk yeah. about oh. them. <laughs> let's not talk about them. <laughs> God, dear. Yeah. Me. So we've been joined by Austin. Hey, Austin. How you doing? Hi, guys. Hey, I'm all right. Thank you. Sorry to be late. That's all right. How was dinner? It was very nice indeed. My daughter does a very mean roast su- Sunday roast. Everyone around there next weekend then. All right. Um, <laughs> going back, going back very, very quickly to what, uh, to, to what Ben was saying. Um, I think there speaks a man who remembers the Maurizio Pochettino era. There is someone who remembers scoring lots of games very, very late on and, and winning games. Yeah. Or it was, it was late and it was touch and go. So it's, yeah, I think, I think we all remember those days. Let's, let's yeah. hope we don't have to go through that again. All right, so um, we Austin, just to catch you up, we've been around everybody's thoughts of the game. Uh, very quickly, what are yours? Um, I flatlined. I the, <laughs> yeah. The, the first thirty minutes was was appalling. Um, I thought we came into it more in the second half of the the first half, and I thought mm. we actually played some decent stuff in the um, in the second part of the first half. The first part of the second half, I also thought we were excellent, and then we sort of sat back and let them come at us. Um, I think we're giving the ball away far too frequently. I mean, Benton Kerr isn't himself. Uh, Saar has only just come back into the side. Uh, I thought we lost a bit when Johnson came on because Johnson didn't track back as much as he should have done. Mm-hmm. However, um, 
we won the game, so I'm 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 happy with that. And I just think we need a little bit more time with Ange, with those players all together again, sort of getting his ideas over and getting them to to implement. Because I can see what they're trying to do. They scare the life out of me playing out from the back. Um, but I, I watched a couple of games today, and other teams are doing exactly the self same thing. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. is this is this going to go out of fashion at some point in time? Because it is dangerous. It is high risk. Um, I think we're two or three games away from getting back to our best because I think it's going to take time for Bissouma and Saar, um, Benton Kerr to get back up to fitness, uh, <clears throat> Sonny to get back to his best. <clears throat> Although I thought his run and cross yesterday for the for the winner was were excellent. Um, so I've got my fingers crossed that we're on the way back, but uh, it's going to take a little while. Okay. Um, I know you, you were talking about Ben Sankur and, uh, Ash was talking about, uh, Alistair Gold earlier on. Other podcasts and podcasters are available. Uh, but, uh, I'm pretty sure Ali Gold was saying that the medical team and the management at Spurs weren't really expecting the best of Ben Sankur until next season because that was a big really? injury he came back from. Wow. So he came back. He had yeah. some really good performances, but the last few games, he's not been quite as good yeah. as we've seen from him in the past. But I mean, I'm huge yeah. injury. What do you expect? Yeah. Yeah, because I think he was out almost, a, well, say nine months, mm -hmm. then got injured quickly again, then came back, and he came, came back to play in a midfield trio or duo, whatever you want to call it, with Ma along with Madison, who he had not played with before in that. Madison also just came back from injury. So you have two players who have not played together before in, in center midfield, and they've both been injured for a while. They're both a bit rusty. You've got Mickey behind him, who's been great, admittedly, but he's also just been injured. Uh, there's been a lot of people coming back. You've got Timo Werner, who's only just joined. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of injury, lots of new players. Uh, so I think it's understandable. I think when you've been out for a whole year and come back, and he played, I look at the minutes at some point, before his ankle injury, I think Benson Kerr played, it was around 180 minutes of worth of football before getting injured and being out another month or two. And then he's come back and played about 270 minutes, if maybe more now. But when I looked at it before this game, you know, it's going to take a while to find that match sharpness. Even if he's somewhat match fit, the match sharpness after being out for a year and you're being thrown right into Premier League level. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, it seems it seems to me as though Spurs don't want to play a fully fit midfield because we replaced Benton Kerr with Basuma, who's got friggin' malaria. So I mean, that no, guy. Apparently, he did. Uh, no, apparently he hasn't. He had yeah. malaria, okay. but he recovered from malaria while he was at the Afcon. Didn't he get malaria last time he was away, out or something like that? I'm sure he, he's had malaria. I before. think when you have malaria, it's it's an ongoing condition that flares yeah. up from yeah. time to time. So. So, Once you've got it, you've got it. You know. But still, I thought he I came on. My stepdaughter has it. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. Uh, I thought when when Basuma came on, I thought he actually put in a good shift. I thought he did yeah. pretty well. We really? saw some signs of, of yeah. early season Basuma. Um, again, there's still that integration, that chemistry with the rest of the midfield, but there's there's more to come from that. So plenty to, to look forward to. Yeah, and just, uh, just one last thing on Benton for um, I do think, and I've, I've wrote this on the CADS board, which is I also think that teams know that part of our build-up play is that ball into the number six position, mm -hmm. and he needs to turn and and you know get it out to the wings or get it up forwards, and then not letting our number six, so Benton Kerr in this case, turn or get any time on the ball at all, and they're immediately closing him down, and it's been really suffocating us. It was the same against um. Was it Everton the last match? Yeah, and Brentford before that. Um, and Brentford as well, did it as well. You know, I think we need to find an answer to that. I mean, it might be that the answer is Bissouma, who who was perhaps more press resistant, is perhaps going to shrug off some of those challenges, or <clears throat> or it might be that you know we need somebody else dropping back beside Benton Kerr when we're in the build up period. Um, but I I don't think it's only that Benton Kerr is not yet on form. I think that is part of it, but I think it's also that teams have adapted to our way of playing, and yeah. we haven't adapted to that yet. I certainly think yeah. teams have 
somewhat figured out our, our playing out from the back because every yeah. single time we got the ball back there, they were pressing five, six of our players and there was no space for them to move. It was suffocating back yeah. there. Um, and we saw the same thing with Everton. We saw the same thing with Brentford. So obviously, you know, those opposition, the opposition managers, uh, WhatsApp group has, has been having a right go. What are we going to yeah. do against Spurs? This is how it works, fellas. <laughs> but, yeah. One, one point I would make is all, in the last three games, I think all the teams that we've played have been extremely physical. Mm. We've had very little protection from the refs. Yeah. I am going to come to that later because I think you all know that's a personal bugbear of mine. But yeah. I saw, I saw positive things in the game yesterday. Uh, just th th that physical aspect that Oz was talking about. Uh, we actually had one of our players, I forget which guy it was, was protecting the Cario. Uh, Madison. Madison. Yeah. 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 That was a, that was a mismatch uh, and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you Not just need to push him out. You just need to push him out of the way. And, and then I think they just stopped doing it, you know. So that was, that was a really good thing. I thought Romero was absolutely imperious yesterday. Right. And I, I think being captain has reined in some of his, uh, more aggressive tendencies. Um, uh, because he knows how important he is to the team. And even Andrew was saying in, in, in Sonny's absence, he had taken on more responsibility in the dressing room. Uh, I think he's, he's terrific. He's, he's a great passer of the ball. Um, he, he's, he stood out. And then, um, the last guy, the guy, BJ, you know, for all the flack, and there's always a whipping boy. It's been so many other guys in the past. Ben Davis, Trippier, you know, just guys who are just whipping boys, you know, not necessarily by us. Um, but, uh, he, Sorry, which guy was I talking about? Uh, ben Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. To be, able to be Welsh. Get, to, to, <laughs> no, 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 nothing no, at all to do with him being Welsh. I'm just saying, well, how's that day? Yeah, that, <laughs> he has scored now a couple of goals. He's been open on other instances, so that's obviously one of our strategies. And I think, I actually think he's better as a super sub. I actually think he is. So it was nice to see, uh, and it was a lovely goal. And, oh, by the way, the, the sons, Madison to Richarlison to Son to John's son. Yeah. 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 As I, as I saw someone wrote, more sons than Kyle Walker. Oh, <laughs> naughty. naughty. Hey, careful. Careful. He'll be round and he'll be saying, you don't talk about my kid. Don't you put my boy's names in your mouth. So, yeah. <laughs> apparently, apparently there's a spas between him and um, Neil Mopé. Really? Who, what a surprise. <laughs> Mopé opening his mouth and getting into trouble. <laughs> Kel surprise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of their physical approach and the, the goalkeeping thing, uh, anybody else really frustrated to see Brentford getting pulled up for obstruction at their very first corner, considering we've given yeah. away two goals in the previous three games simply because of that kind of tactic? Where's the inconsistency? Yeah. Where's the consisten consistency, refs? I, I, firmly, I firmly believe that, that Ange needs to start complaining about it because if your goalkeeper is being impeded by someone who has no intention whatsoever of playing mm. the ball, then that, that is simply a foul, full stop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ange and I did was... say in the build-up to this game, or it might have been straight after, he did say that somebody at the club had been in contact with the PGMOL to, to clarify what the rules are on obstructing a goalkeeper. Yeah, because no. I, I, I do think... In, I saw a lot of people say, oh, uh, this was in the, uh, was that in the Everton game or the one before? I can't remember, but one of the games where I think it was against Everton saying that there, uh, Harrison wasn't at, uh, in Everton. Yeah. yeah. Jack Harrison. It yeah. was just, it was just standing there, but looking back at it again on their goal, he's not just standing there. He's actually, no, he's, not. he's at, actually about six feet away from Vicario. And as the corner is being taken, he's going towards him and then he's, he's bumping into him, standing there and backing into him. I mean, he's not just standing there. <laughs> like, yeah. He's not just allowed to stand his ground. Sure, if he just stood still from, you know, whatever minute, I, you know, it's fine. Um, but... Buona Notte and Welbeck were trying to do exactly the same thing again yeah. yesterday, but the referee yeah. was picking him up on it and not allowing it to happen. So why is it not allowed to happen in one game, but very much allowed to be happening in another? It makes no sense to me. 
Yeah. Well, unless unless they did actually have a discussion about it, uh, uh, and uh, the refs are, have been suggested that you should make the call on that. So yeah, I might. But one thing, I, and I kept seeing people say Vicario should be stronger. But when you're as a goalkeeper on your toes, ready to come for a cross, and someone, I think it was Harrison again, was just feet firmly planted on the ground. Mm-hmm low center of gravity backing into Vicario, you're not going to be stronger on a, as a goalkeeper there, whether you're Vicario or you're Edison. You might push him out the way, but, you know, you've still got a high, high point of gravity, like ready to come for the cross. It's You're going to be bundled over in that. You're going to be, you know, pushed. Okay, who's going to be the first to say it? What happens if Vicario puts two hands on an opposition player and shoves him? Do it, do it. <laughs> yeah, but what's going to happen? What is going to happen if that, oh, if the carrier does it? It'll be a penalty, It'll be a penalty yeah. for the opposition. Yeah. yeah. Right. I fear, I fear, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I think that, I, I mean, I completely agree that there's no consistency in the end. They kind of seem to sort of change their, um, understanding of the rules without informing people as well, which is, which is very strange being more lax on it. Mm. But now we've noticed it, I'm quite happy to see that We've reacted by putting Madison in there to, to give him some protection. And I still think that, um, Vicario, he has a little bit of responsibility for it. I understand what you're saying, Benjamin, but I also think that he needs to go out really strong for those. And if it's a foul, then he'll get a foul. But I think yeah. he's, he's kind of half and half, kind of half, sort of like half going for it and half saying I'm being fouled and not really, if he really commits to it, goes for the ball, he'll get fouled. I think in some of these, he, he, he wasn't strong enough. He wasn't, yeah. he wasn't I, enough, I, I think he will be. I, I do think there's a sort of a, a point somewhere in between the, you know, yeah. he, he could be stronger. I do agree with that. And I think he should, I, I, I'd like to see him push the player away, but he did do that against Manchester City. I think it was Ruben Diaz who was on him. He pushed him away two times and De Bruyne was just waiting waiting, I'm not going to take the corner. Mm. Then Diaz backed into him again, and right then, De Bruyne takes the corner. And, yeah, so it's, it's kind of difficult. You can be stronger and difficult. push him away, but it's just going to happen again. The corner kick take will just wait until, you know. Yeah. Um, I think, there's, so been, I don't, I think yeah. there's been a tactic of goalkeepers expecting, you know, players to come in and effectively foul them to obstruct them and for referee to give it. And they've been expecting that to happen. So we've suddenly got this situation where we've conceded a goal in what is typical and obvious con- obstruction. And we're all looking at the ref and going, well, come on, are you, when are you going to blow up for that? And the ref's like, no, no, it's fine. It's, okay. as, as David I, said so, so memorably in the, in the chat, VAR reviewed it. A Spurs shirt was in the video, so nothing was given. <laughs> I, I, I do, I do kind of, I don't know if I was hoping we would do the same tactic because it's, thing it was against um was it against in this game there was one game where i was expecting i think it was benton kerr was in around their keeper you know after after we conceded those kind of goals mm. and then he just walked away again he was going towards the keeper and stood there for a second and i think it was poro who was taking the corner kick and benton kerr walked away right as the kick was taken as that was a bit confusing to me because i it was like are we gonna do the same tactic? Apparently not. Like, yeah, I think that was the Everton game. I saw, I remember seeing that and thinking, ah, he's too good for that kind of stuff. He would, yeah, do it. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Benton cool for you. But, yeah. yeah. Again, that man on a, on his day when he's playing well, he could play in slippers. He'd look fantastic. <laughs> you, by the way, just did you mention Benton? Do you think there's an aspect that he is holding back because of those injuries? Um, he just seems not as aggressive. Um, I, I saw an interview with um, James Madison and yep. Stephen um, <coughs> oh, Snooker player, uh, won lots of championships, not Davis, the other one. Henry? Henry. Uh, where they because Stephen Hendry had so many Achilles house. injuries during his time at the, at the bays. <laughs> but Madison, Madison was making the point that when you recover from an injury, for, for a while, you're actually not 100% sure how it's going to stand up. No. So you, psychologically, you you don't know what's going to happen when you make a firm challenge or or have a tackle. And then physically, you, 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 you do have the problem until you get into it and start to get... So I think it does take a number of games after you come back from a serious injury mm-hmm. and, until you have the confidence knowing that 
what was injured will stand up under the same sort of challenge. I know exactly yeah. what he means. I know yeah. exactly what he means. I, did, I had bad knee injury 20 years later, still in trouble. But yeah, yeah. I, was about to, I was about to say, we, <laughs> Stuart and I were talking about uh, injuries, knee injuries. I've had two ACL reconstructions. Uh, and I want to say, even this day, you know, again, uh, 12 years later from this second one, which was a two stage, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. I'm still kind of worried if I go out there and play exercise football for fun, which I, you know, do twice a week, but I'm still like, shit, can my knee hold up? I just put a swear word in there. You, you did. That no, I'm, to. It's fine. No, we're, we're live. You can't do that. Messed it all up. It wasn't bloody me this time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, um, it, it does take a while. I think professional football is probably a better at handling that because mm. that is what that is their job. They got it be there, you know, but they're still human beings. And I always kind of wish in, in such big injuries that and maybe they do that players had like a, a therapist uh, session as well, that, you know, how can I handle this on the pitch that the psychological aspect of it is, is holding me back. Um, I know earlier I in know the season you're... when Richarlison admitted mm -hmm. he was struggling and he was going to go see a therapist uh, and said something along the lines of, well, I'm not a therapist. I'm not going to be the guy who's going to help him. But yeah. we can make sure he sees the guy who, who mm -hmm. does. So if I'm sure if therapy is needed, therapy will be available. Okay, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. let's draw a line under that, and uh, we'll be back right after this. <laughs> And there we go, we're back. Okay, so now we're going to have a, a very quick chat about the game itself. What were the highlights? What were the lowlights? What do you want to see more of? And who do you want to see more of? Or potentially less. Uh, okay, we're going to start with David, who's been quite quiet tonight. David, for those of you that don't know David, he's normally very galubrious. Speaks a lot. <laughs> well, I think I'm not talking very much because I don't really know what to make of this match. Like, it's so weird that we won it and wasn't yeah. happy with it. Um, so, uh, what did I think? But, um, so I thought, um, defense was absolutely fa fantastic again. Um, especially, well, Van der Ven was perhaps, perhaps slightly clumsy for the penalty, but outside of that, that acceleration, he's so fast. Romari, Rem, um, QT, as Ash said, imperious. Mm -hmm. Um, Poro did something that pleased me, which was a first time cross, which is, I think, the first time I've seen him do a first time cross. Didn't get a goal, but I quite, I think Poro is amazing, has amazing crossing, but sometimes I wish he'd try and get it in earlier. So quite often he takes that first, second touch and uh, someone's closed him down already. So I was quite pleased to see that. Um, Doggy sometimes is slightly wor worrying because he loses possession quite frequently. He does, yeah. Didn't he get, yeah. he got injured, didn't he? I would have, do we think he's going to be back? I'm not sure. Quickly? I don't know I, yet. I'm he seemed unhappy. Ice pack on the knee. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did he have an ice pack on the knee? Okay. The uh, well, okay. he had. He did have a small knee injury earlier on in the season, which was coincided with the time that he was out suspended. So maybe he should have kicked someone and got another yellow card. Who knows? Um, Ash, <laughs> over to you. Were you happy to see your fellow compatriot Ben Davis come on for for I the doggy? Didn't, didn't, didn't even notice. <laughs> No, of course, yeah. He was on the pitch uh, for the winner. What are you on about? There you go. There, <laughs> there you go. Exactly. He might have been involved, actually, in, in the... Uh, in the, in the this no, guy. his name doesn't end in son, so it's not allowed. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Davis son. So um, that that goal, the second goal, was, we must all admit, that was Ange Ball at its perfection. Yeah. Um, breaking out from our penalty area. And just straight line, everyone knowing where everyone's going to go, lovely passes. And Johnson, got a hand it to him, apparently they've been working on him. And not just him, but the other winger as well, Werner, to arrive at the back post when those crosses are, are, are coming in. Um, yeah, so that, that, that was, I thought was pretty exciting. Good to see Madison doing a pass like that. Good to see Sonny back. Uh, we're going to get healthier. Uh, what's up with Decky? He was putting in a shift, no doubt about it, but, uh, no assists, no goals. Is, is, has, has his role changed? What's going on with Decky? I think uh, there's a, there's a sense 
of timidness amongst many of our wingers. We don't have that kind of mentality to attack them and commit the player. And we didn't see that from anyone apart from the time we were on the pitch until Sonny came on. When Sonny That's... came on, first thing he did, <clears throat> attacked them, committed them, and we started to get some results from it. And, of course, the goal came from that. That said, Sars' goal was partly uh, Kulisevsky assist. He did play yes, the ball to... Yes. Yeah. I don't think it counts as an assist, but it, it was... Yeah, does Sars get the goal and the assist from that one? I mean, how does that <laughs> work? Yeah, we haven't given enough love to Sars' goal. I thought that was super... Yeah. Well, really I well thought Sars was yeah, really was, good. Was so delighted for I him. thought he was, really was unlucky to come uh, off, frankly. Yeah, was I, a great... I do think Kulisevsky kind of worked his way into it in the second half, and I, I do think he is... I've said it before, I think he's vital to a front three, actually, more so than people probably... Other people are very more excited by, by players that are fast and can run... Now, kind of, I don't know if I'm jumping in ahead of someone here, but <laughs> talking about the match, but I, uh, I think it's a problem when a front three players are all runners that just want to, you know, run away. Timo Werner, fast player, run away. Richarlison is not a player that naturally comes for the ball. Same with Brennan Johnson. So I think to kind of keep the possession up there, we need a player up there who's capable of receiving the ball under pressure, buying, or other players, a second or two, to join up. And uh, I think Kulisevsky is the only player who can consistently do that because I don't think the rest of them are technically consistent enough. Didn't, didn't, ben, didn't, he do that? Right. didn't he do that in one of the games? I think that maybe when we would lost a player, uh, they moved him into the number nine. And he was actually doing a pretty good job in the number nine role there, holding up the ball. I, I can't remember, but yeah. I think that was possibly. against Chelsea, wasn't it? When we all missed I was going to say, I think, yeah, yeah. I think Chelsea was that game. He ran himself into the ground. He was fantastic. Yeah. He also, against, uh, was it against Sheffield United, he kind of ended up on top uh, as a, more of a forward, I think, as well, when so he, he scored. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was us. And then he scored, he scored, scored the winner, actually, yeah, on, yeah, his, on his right foot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kudos Kudos are nailed on starter every, he's probably yeah. one of the first on the, on the team sheet. And I, I do think it's it's a huge problem, for me at least, that our front three, not counting Kulisevsky, but, but the other ones, are so inconsistent technically. I don't mind when a striker or forward loses the ball by attempting something, attempting a shot, attempting a dribble. But the amount of times our forwards lose the ball by not even being able to trap a pass, hmm. that's infuriating to me. You see Richarlison barely... Ball's coming to his feet. For some reason, it jumps, you know, three feet away from him or he doesn't, it rolls under his foot or, you know, the, the inconsistency is, is too much for me. Cause, you know, any striker's gonna, you can point to good goals by Richarlison. You can point to good goals by Stefan Everson or Sagai Rabrov or who have we that kind of, you know, any, any decent striker who scores an average amount of goals will score good goals. Um, but yeah, I just wish we had someone better there, technically better. Uh, Same honestly, with Johnson. Honestly, I think, I think Richie was not good yesterday. Yeah. Um, like he, you know, he, he had, there was an awful lot of wasted balls and misplaced passes and scuff. It was, it was, it was actually, um, it was like the Richardson from before his mm -hmm. dick operation. And I was just wondering whether the effects have worn off and you should have his dick operated on again. I don't know. <laughs> I thought um, you said that first time. I was like, he surely said hip. He had he said hip, I'm sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> he is not I Steve think... Malbronk, okay? So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I, 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 we saw it even with Johnson at one point. There was a ball played in behind that Johnson. Johnson was actually on to. And then somehow it bounced off his chest or leg or whatever it was and, and bounced out of play. Out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, same, same. It's yeah. like, ah, uh, no. And I wish in those situations, I know Kulisevsky isn't as fast, but I know when he gets the ball, even if he has a bad game, he'll use he's, it. He'll, yeah. he'll be able to hold on to the ball and buy us some time up there. Um, so yeah. And I think even, I'm going to be hard here, but I think even Sun can be bad under pressure when he's got you know he's not good at receiving the ball with a man behind him and, and yeah. you know so he's much better when he gets it with a bit of space to run into yeah yeah so yeah, much yeah. better yeah 
Okay. Um, yeah, in so terms of yeah, Richardson, really that means we've got yeah, we've got too many that are just like running into space, and we only have Q. Yeah. True. Well, we also don't have many people that would play the ball into space for those guys to run into. You know, early on in the season, well, just after Werner joined, he made numerous runs that just weren't found. Mm -hmm. um, Johnson, I think, needs to use his pace more. He needs to be attacking that space and, and going for it. But the ball's not being played there. Maybe with the return of Madison, we're going to see it. Um, in defence of Richardson, he was up against, what's, what's his name, Van der Hecker, who was yeah. magnificent yesterday. He was... There's another guy who's going to go for big money eventually. Brighton, another one off the conveyor belt. Um, yeah, I, I also want to say that even even though I, I don't think he's a long-term solution or answer, I actually think that Timo Werner is quite good at taking his man on. His delivery is, is kind of not that good, but he's good at taking yes. on his direct opponent and getting around him and then doing a, a crap cross. But like... <laughs> I, I thought shot. he did better yesterday. I, I thought that um, Werner was the best yesterday that he's been since he's been with us, albeit only, I think that's his third game. No, the but Brentford game. Three times he, the three times he beat his man, once he, I remember him going down to the byline and crossing, and a couple of times he came inside. The shooting still leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah. But in terms of taking people on, I thought he did better yesterday. Yeah, he did, he did. He definitely could have done that's better with that shot. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, which brings us on to another topic. It's like, how much longer can Sonny go on for? He is so important to this team and the way that we play. He's 31 going on 32. How much longer is he going to be, get, be able to go on for? Three more seasons? Top end? Max? I, I think if we are to keep him going, we need to play him more central without having to run a whole... I think his acceleration is still decent and finding space mm -hmm. in the box. I just don't think he has the legs to kind of run all game. We played him central early in the season and it seemed to work all right. Um, again, not a long-term solution, though. But <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, when, aren't you the same guy who a couple of minutes ago saying we needed someone better up front? No, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, that's why I'm saying it's not a long-term yeah. thing. But I, I think I'd rather Sun central than Richarlison. But, I mean, um, I I don't I don't know about Sun. I've, I've been... I've, I've, been seeing bad signs for the past two years on him, I think. <laughs> um, his pace kind of gone a bit. His first touch not being as good as it used to be and so on. I'm still a fan. I think there's still a fantastic player there. And I think, you know, a lot of the, not hate, but it's because it's not hate, but a lot of the negativity does stem from last season where he was injured for a very, very large chunk of the season, which only got sorted out in the summer. Why I they didn't say, very... take a few weeks off and get sorted <laughs> out now, and we'd have had a better time. I do think he's very important to us, and you could see that when he came on. Mm. The fans reacted massively when he came on, uh, loud cheer and everything. So I think he's very important to the team. I don't think there are... I think there are, at most, two and a half more seasons in him. <laughs> yeah, maximum. I don't yeah. I can't see him, but not, yeah. not, because I think his legs are going to... Yeah. Go slowly. I, I think that this might be the case, but when you look at our um, our record in terms of signings, we, we're signing people, <clears throat> we're signing young players with a view to them coming into the, si the side. So if Son's got two and a half seasons left, I don't care, because yeah. we will have someone that will have been signed in that position before he's ready to, to quit. So I don't worry about then, I worry about now. Um, I think the guy's still performing at a very, very high level. And um, the the, uh, the cross for the goal at the end was absolutely spot on. Yeah, I have to say, I think so, that's what I thought the uh, the Antonio Nusa deal was going to be. I thought they were bringing in Nusa so that he could be the long-term replacement for, for Sonny. There's another one with knee injuries. Problems. There's another one with knee problems. <laughs> Cartilage, yes. <laughs> but you know, John, Johnson might be that player. If I, I was going to say that. Get yeah. confidence. Johnson needs yeah. to needs to he really needs to step up. Um, he needs to be attacking that space far more than he currently is. But he's still in his first season. You know, yeah. his celebration he, was it just me or was he showing the number of assists and the number of goals he scored on? No, it was, yeah. it was a WWE celebration from one of his favourite 
I don't even know what. Oh, WWE what now? Is, it's like a wrestling thing, I think. Is it? It's, it's a wrestling, wrestling thing. thing anyway. I, had to, I, had to, I had to. I had to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, these kids nowadays. <laughs> what, I mean, what position? What position did he play for Forest when he got what? He got at least ten goals. Um, wide right. Wide right. <laughs> It's yeah. interesting, though, because early on in the season, he actually came on quite a bit on the left wing, I mm -hmm. think, didn't he? And Kulisevsky on the right wing, Sun, Central. Um, or Richarlison, yeah. I think he played Last left wing for us a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, don't, I don't think yeah. he likes being on the left. I don't think that's no. his position. I think his position is on the right where he's playing. Yeah. So, what, so my, my question then is, like, uh, since he can score goals, well, could he play through the middle, uh, ultimately? You know, in a couple of years from now, might be able to. Yeah, he might yeah. need to fill out a bit. He's still very waif-like. Yeah. Well, isn't Sunny? Sunny hasn't filled out. He's not. He's not that big. You know. Sunny is a good strapping six footer. He's he's a big lad. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. He's, he's got more muscle than uh, than Brandon Johnson. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But he's ten years older, so he should have. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thirty well, years he, older. I don't. I have to. He, he I'm could be more flat. <laughs> he, could he could be a possibility there for um, Sonny's replacement. Could be. I, I don't mm. know enough about him. The thing is, uh, for me, Son has, and, and the one thing he's always been very, very good at, of course, the long range shots, both from the left and the right coming in and taking the shot. I don't see any other player being able to Madison. do that. Yeah, Madison. Madison, but, but when we're talking about replacements, um, oh, like, I don't see Johnson being that player who consistently scores all definitely, well. definitely not Werner. Definitely not Werner. No, no. Yeah, exactly. Same. <laughs> of course. So, yeah. It, it's... You know, I think in fairness, no, was it with Sonny when he first arrived? That's right. No. It took yeah. him a couple of seasons oh, before he started yeah, scoring that, that sort of goal. He was, taking, he was taking a decent number of shots, but they weren't going in the goal. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It took him, what, 18 months or so before he really exploded yeah, onto the scene right. for us. Yeah, he's, yeah. He spoke to Parch about leaving after the first season. Because yeah. He was, and, and that he wasn't contributing and things like that, you know. So, um, yeah, Johnson might actually... Now he captains the club. Else? <laughs> yeah, what, what about anybody else? What, what's Parrot like? Is he even a, a, a realistic option down the way? Or he'll just disappear? He's looked at by other European teams because he's playing in Holland at the moment. Mm. Yeah, and he's scoring. having a good season in terms of goals and assists. Ajax looking at him, apparently. Yeah, I do think the problem with Parrot is that he is now... Is he 22 or 23? He's going on 22, 23, I think. isn't he? Yeah. And it, I, I keep thinking in modern-day football, you get very, very few um, like people who break through that like, later on in their career. You don't get Are many... Okay? Yeah, but he was he was playing for us when he was twenty one, twenty two, was wasn't he? Yeah, his first game. No, his first he, he didn't really he didn't really land until he was twenty two, twenty three. He he scored three in the, it's the season under Sherwood. Uh, the last when he was here, he scored like three goals from around the Aston Villa weird free kick that bounced off the wall. Oh. I think it was twenty one that season. Then he turned twenty two in the summer and was for the next season. The point being, I, I think. With, I'm not sure when Parrot's birthday is. Parrot's 22. Yeah. But if he's 23 soon, I think, I think, personally, I think it's too late for him, but it's difficult to know. No, um, he's only just, he's only just turned 22. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. Let me see. Uh, seven goals and three assists this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right. He's not as far along as Harry Kane was at that age, I don't yeah. think. But it's Harry Kane. Come on, <laughs> let's not yeah, no, let's yeah, not try. Yeah. And, let's try not to compare players to Harry Kane too much. It's, yeah. it's a fairly no, unfair yeah. comparison. Well, that, you're I, absolutely I, right. By the way, I think it, at 22, we should. I think maybe we should should have seen more from him if we think he's going to come on to be, you know, what we hope him to be. Yeah. I think we're well, expecting think to see more from Villies and potentially Scarlet than we are from, than from Troy Parrott. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, Troy Parrott's clearly doing quite well at Excelsior and, you know, there are clubs Excelsior. interested in him. Hopefully we'll get some money for him and maybe a 50% sell-on clause or a buyback clause. And if he breaks out and does really well, we can go back for him. Yeah. Wait, just just uh, because he scored that lovely goal uh, and it's great to have him back. What, what do we... Th I mean, what is, he is 20. What, what do we think about the, the, uh, the potential of Saar... He, I love that guy. You Fantastic. Know? Yeah. Yeah? I absolutely yeah. love that player. Yeah, he is. 
for me, he's able to drive the tempo up so much more than Hybjerk, for instance. Uh, he drives the team forward. He drives the tempo up. He doesn't lower the tempo of the game. And I think that suits our style under Ange so much. Um, can, I, can I say that when Saar played his first games this season, or maybe last season, or whenever it was, I compared him to a young Vieira and got yeah. a level of ridicule. Yeah. But oh, I that's... actually think, looking at him, I think he has the potential to be that sort of player because he's such a good driving player. Yeah, I said the same when he was at Mets. I thought very, very yeah. similar in terms of long legs, eats up the ground. Um, yeah. Not particularly good from long range, but that's about the only weakness in his game, I think. Yeah, he's, 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 yeah. He, he reminds he, me a bit of... Uh, oh, go sorry. On, go, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> It reminds me a bit of, of Yaya Toure, Toure as well. Uh, in a way, not mm. as, as goal scoring. Well, he's starting to score more goals. Has he scored three or four goals this season now, Sar? He's scored a few, yeah, hasn't he? Two. He scored it against United and yesterday against Brighton. Yes, yeah, true. So far, I can uh, remember. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Yaya uh, Toure is certainly a more palpable and acceptable option in comparison than Vieira. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll take that one. But, uh, Yaya, I, I kind of I wish Yaya was still at our club because he was a coach for, wasn't it, for the under mm-hmm. something team? Um, under 18s, yeah. I, yeah, and I kind of wish, you know, if Saar was to get a bit of <laughs> personal coaching on that, but, you know, it's, it is what it is. I really love him as a player. He's one of my favorite players at the moment. I but thought. I wonder what's going to happen to him, like, because when, when we have Bissouma, Bentoncourt, and Madison, all fit. Is there room in the starting lineup for Saar as well? Gets worse next season. Bissouma, Bentoncourt, Madison, uh, Bergval, who apparently his name is not pronounced Bergval, it's Barry Val, but I'm going to keep with Bergval anyway. He's been told he's coming in to be a first teamer. So, you know, the competition just ramps up even more next season. Yeah. And Com- Jamie Donnelly, who I really rate. Right. Jamie Donnelly, Alfie Devine. Uh, yeah. Yep. Oh, Alfie Devine looks fantastic. I do think it's good to have the options, though, because we, we already talked about Benton Kerr. What is what is his... Uh, I mean, I think there's a future. I'm not saying there isn't a future, but we don't know the level he's going to come back at. I yeah. still hope, hope and think he's come, coming back to the level he was at before his big injuries, but, you know, the future is uncertain. Um, the same for any other player we haven't seen. Yeah. As much of Jamie Donnelly or Alfie Devine, we don't actually know their level against, you know, Premier League opposition. <laughs> and, um, of course, for this entire conversation, we've completely ignored Oliver Skip. So what does that <laughs> say about his future? Yeah. No, I and you, he, and you got, I think he's a good squad player. He's a, good he's a squad great player. squad player. If he's I think, to be a squad player, then I think we should keep him. Yeah, I think he's the Nicky but Butt of this side, frankly. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think Heiberg is obviously not a future Spurs player, so... No. You know, come the summer, he's probably gone, and then you know that leaves room for someone else. I asked you a question: what what happens to Sar when? I don't know who asked the question, but uh, yeah, you know, I I think he's always going to be a player who's who will be in the midfield uh, trio. We have I I think okay. he'll uh, personally because he drives the tempo up. He's able. He's a different type of player than the rest of them. Because uh, he has that sort of more athleticism than the other players, I think, and more, he's, he's di- running is more dynamic, I think, and, and covers more, much more ground in a way. I'm yeah, not sure absolutely. stats and that, but yeah, uh, certainly covers for so, so Pedro Porro. Ahead of Bissouma or Bentancourt? No, who goes, who goes I, out there if, if, if uh, <laughs> I'm going to go out? I was isn't saying, it, isn't it a horses was... for courses situation? If yeah. it's, if the game is right for that kind of setup, then you go that way. But I think I... he's, he's the glue that makes the midfield work yeah. for me. I agree. I, I do think. The horses, if he makes it work, that means every game he's going to be starting. So that begs the question, which of those guys goes out? I think recently I was talking about, I kind of was seeing a midfield of Saar. Uh, Madison and Benton Kerr, but now I'm actually questioning Benton Kerr more than the others at the minute, mm. at, or at the moment, because of his match sharpness or lack of match sharpness. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was, at that point, I was thinking Bissouma because of his, um, he had a tendency to switch off his focus. We saw it against City in the 3 3 game. He lost the ball. We talked about that, you know, losing the ball as a six, dropping back. Um, he lost the ball in that game. 
and he had some disciplinary issues as well. So I was at that point, you know, kind of thinking he would the one be the one making way, but horses for courses, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. Hopefully, we'll have a lot more matches next season because we'll be in the Champions League. Yeah. Europe of some description, at least. <laughs> we'll be in Champions League. Yeah. Oh, I think, I think we all want Champions League. Nobody certainly wants yeah. to go for the Europa Conference again. No. So. <laughs> but yeah, it's, that's in, an interesting thing, though. We only end up playing, what is it, like 42 games this season or something like that. I'm not sure what... Uh, one game spare. more than the minimum a Premier League yeah. side can play. Just one more. <laughs> yeah. It's not a lot of games. Whereas other seasons... We've played like what sixty-seven games or something, you know. Um, so, can I pay a compliment to something that I haven't heard mentioned? And I know I joined the party late. But Madison yesterday hit what I think was the pass of the season with the outside of his right foot. He played it between two defenders to to um, Richarlison to clear that one-on-one -on -one chance that Richarlison had. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. Was course, that was the most glorious pass that I've seen all year. Well. No, uh, Skip also hit one against... Um, oh, yeah, that first time one from uh, Skip. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was from Man City. That was also with the outside of his right foot. That was yeah, a lovely one. one. That was sensational. Yeah, but that, that oh, pass oh. yesterday by Madison was absolutely sensational. Well, it was, but what about Lemmy Lo Celso? He hit one on the outside of his uh, left. Yeah, yeah. And we scored on, on, on that one, you know? Yeah, no, uh, no. Matt. Yeah, Sorry? but we talked about horses for courses and, and glue. I think, uh, oh. I think so, so, so is headed for the knacker's yard. So, uh, <laughs> that man is made By of glass. Way, he cannot stay fit. You know, you guys, can, can you ask something? Because I've been out of the Brit a long time. You guys say it all the time and I can sort of guess what it is, but what does horses for courses mean? You know, <laughs> they don't say it over here. Really? <laughs> they don't say that in the US. Oh. Did it they say it means judge, basically judge your selection for what's placed in front of you, what you're going up against. Yeah, okay, I get that. But what does it mean, horses for courses? What does that mean? So you, you choose your players. In the Grand National, you use a, a, a sprinter in the Kentucky Derby, or is that what you mean? <laughs> That's yeah. probably it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. Um, which right. horse for which race course? Okay. From the Oxford, right, Oxford Dictionary, different people are suited to different things. That's their explanation. So. Okay. Got it. <laughs> you can say it all the time. I go, what are, what are you talking about? <laughs> look, it, it, look, Ash, it took you over a year to ask you what CADS meant. So I think <laughs> we need to... <laughs> okay, so, so the next time we do one of these um, things, we have to have invented a new sort of um, idiom. Yeah. And use it all the way through. So all of us, but we don't tell Ash what it means at the start. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. Okay. So I think we are coming towards the end. Very, very quickly, though. I'm going to go around. I'm going to ask every, everybody for their man of the match, and uh, we'll go from there. So we're going to start with Austin. Last one to the party. First one up. Uh, I was very, very impressed yesterday with Kulusevsky, and I was amazed when he was taken off. Because Kulusevsky received the ball under pressure on so many occasions mm -hmm. and beat one or two players and, and retained the ball that I thought he was the best player on the pitch, to be quite honest, and, and certainly in the first half. And I literally was amazed when he was taken off. Okay. Uh, David, what do you think? Well, I was, I'd be very tempted to give it to um, Cutie, but I'm going to go for Brennan Johnson. Okay, Ash. <laughs> You're just doing that to wind someone up here. <laughs> Ash, what about you? Who did, he, who did? No, sorry. Who did he say before Brennan Johnson? Cutie Romero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cutie Romero. I thought as captain, he was terrific. I, I, I really like him as captain. I, I really like that guy. Plus, he's still got that nasty streak, which is. Uh, you know, oh, but yeah, didn't get booked. Watch. Did not yeah. get booked. Didn't he yeah, kick he someone? Didn't, didn't he kick someone after the final whistle? <laughs> 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 There's a video of him kicking someone after the final whistle. Right. So, Ash, yeah. who are you going with? Come on, definitive answer. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going. I'm going for uh, Romero. Okay. Vicario uh, uh, for his great goal celebration. He's like number two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ben, who are you up with? Oh, my dad, I was last because I had to have a You're not last, I'm last. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're it. last. Well, yeah. um, Sar, for me, Sar. 
just okay. for driving the tempo up and scoring the goal. And yeah, so it might not be as flashy as some of the other players, but yeah, important. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go for someone you've, none of you have talked about and probably for good reason. I'm going to go for Van der Hecker from Brighton. I thought he was fantastic <laughs> yesterday and potentially the kind of player that we could very well do within our squad. Certainly if we're looking for another centre back. There's okay. But if you were going to choose a Tottenham player, who would it be? Stu? Yes. And yes. there we go, everybody. Thank you all for joining us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what we'll do, we'll see you next week, which will be after, it's not the Chelsea game, the Wolves game. And uh, yeah, until then, everybody, thank you and come on, you Spurs. Thanks Cheers. for organising, Stuart. <laughs> Avoided that one. <laughs> but now we're off, Stu. Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? <laughs>